The world we have come to know is due for a series of massive, possibly wrenching changes. In the last 30 years, oil companies have not been building new refineries. The reason why is simple. We have reached peak oil production. In the summer of 2008, the price of oil reached a historically unprecedented peak of $147 per barrel. The spike in prices caused prices of other goods, such as food, to rise as well. Agriculture is heavily dependent on oil. Pesticides and fertilizers are made from it, and farm machinery is powered by it, as are the trucks, trains, and planes used to ship produce locally or worldwide. When the price of oil increases, so too does the price of all these agricultural inputs. In Mexico, the price of tortillas rose so rapidly that it sparked riots. Other third world and developing nations experienced similar unrest. In the United Kingdom and other parts of Europe, truckers found high fuel prices cutting so deeply into their profits that they could no longer afford to operate. In protest, they began blocking roads. Spain nearly experienced serious food shortages because of similar strikes. In an effort to quell unrest, the governments of these countries began distributing subsidies to hard-hit truckers. The recent rise in the price of oil is attributable to a confluence of factors. Increased demand from rapidly industrializing economies like India and China. Rising living standards in these countries has also caused a shift towards a Western-style diet and agricultural techniques which require high inputs of fossil fuels. Speculation driven by demand is another explanation. The biggest contributing factor, however, is peak oil. In the late 1950s, a geologist by the name of Paul Hubert predicted that the world would eventually reach a peak oil condition. According to the Hubert Peak Curve, by 2050, we will have roughly as much oil as we did in 1960. In 1960, the world population was just 3 billion. In 2050, it is projected to be over 9 billion. 42 years from now, three times as many people will rely on approximately one-third to one-half of existing oil reserves. Oil prices have dropped recently due to a global economic slowdown triggered by stock market crashes and rising unemployment in the United States, the UK, and elsewhere in the world. When and if the global economy recovers, it's a dead certainty that oil prices will go back up to the level seen in the summer of 2008 and beyond. As the peak oil problem becomes more apparent, oil prices will reach a peak and then demand will taper off dramatically. However, as prices rise, food will get dramatically more expensive, and gradually imports of certain foodstuffs and other non-local goods will decline and even disappear. In short, the consumer economy as we know it today is in danger of disappearing. So too is the high-tech society that has developed over the last 20 years. Everyone can reduce their consumption of oil by taking public transit whenever possible and cutting unnecessary car trips bicycling, and walking. Yet another possible solution to the impending energy crisis is to increase housing densities in cities. In Europe, many cities are already walkable and friendly to pedestrians, with excellent public transit networks. In the future, urban gardens like this one will become commonplace. Nearby farms will cease to grow food for export or distribution to far-flung places, as it would be too expensive to do so. Houses and office buildings will also need to be designed, so that they draw upon natural sources of energy as much as possible, while effectively retaining heat in the winter months and staying cool in the summer. In the United Kingdom and Ireland, various groups are springing up and creating what are called transition towns. The creators of these intentional communities hope to make the shift by dramatically reducing their reliance on petroleum-based energy and developing local and natural sources of energy. One of the strategies being employed to help make the transition is ramping up local agriculture and manufacture of goods. Kinsale, Ireland has a transitional town group which is closely working with the local government to make the town almost completely self-sufficient by 2019. A number of possible alternative sources of energy are currently being explored. They are 
biofuel, coal, nuclear power, solar power, hydrogen, and wind power. All these sources of energy look like potential solutions, although they have drawbacks. Biofuels require substantial allocation of land that could otherwise be used to grow food crops. This particular problem could be offset by using plants which grow rapidly and permit several plantings a year. Switchgrass and hemp are notable examples of such plants. Coal is a dirty form of energy. In fact, coal-fired plant exhaust stacks require special scrubbers to remove pollution. During the closing years of the Second World War, Nazi Germany used coal to create synthetic fuel with suboptimal results. Experts say that if we use coal to make fuel, available reserves could be used up in as little as 20 years. Nuclear power can be efficient. However, supplies of uranium fuel are not abundant. Some energy analysts have pegged total U.S. energy consumption at 220 terawatts annually. To meet that need, over 10,000 full-scale nuclear reactors would need to be built. Then there is the problem of safely disposing of the waste fuel, which cannot be reused. Hydrogen is touted as a cure-all by some, yet it is really a means of storing energy since you need to expend as much energy using some other source in order to make the same amount of hydrogen fuel. Solar power is still somewhat inefficient and costly. Solar panels also require substantial amounts of oil in their manufacture. In the Northern Hemisphere, sunlight is not consistently available, meaning that some of the energy captured on a sunny day needs to be stored somehow. Indeed, solar energy could still become a significant supplement to conventional forms of electric power generation once cheaper, more efficient forms of harvesting the sun's energy do become available. Already, substantial efforts are underway to reduce the cost of solar panels and boost their efficiency. Wind power suffers from the same problem as solar energy in the sense that a suitable power source is not consistently available, except in areas where strong winds are a regular feature of the local climate. Ultimately, alternative sources of energy cannot be a total replacement for oil. At best, they can only supplement what's left. In the decades to come, we will be faced with some stark and unpleasant choices to make. Our best chance of success lies not in tightly hanging on to our present way of life, but figuring out what comes after oil.